from around the globe, it's theCUBE with digital coverage of Red Hat Summit 2020, brought to you by Red Hat. Welcome back. This is theCUBE's coverage of Red Hat Summit 2020. Of course, this year, instead of all gathering together in San Francisco, we're getting to talk to Red Hat executives, their partners, and their customers where they are around the globe. I'm your host, Stu Miniman, and happy to welcome to the program Nick Parsett, who is a senior director of technology strategy at Red Hat. He happens to be on a boat in the Bahamas. So Nick, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, thank you for inviting me. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here and it's a great pleasure to work for a company that has always uh, dealt with remote people. So it's really easy for us to do this kind of thing. Yeah, Nick, you know, it's interesting. I, I've been saying probably for the last 10 years that the challenge of our time is really distributed systems. You know, from a software standpoint, that's what we talk about. Uh, and even more so today, number one, uh, of course, the current situation with the global, plan global pandemic, but number two, the topic we're going to talk to you about is edge and 5G. It's obviously gotten a lot of hype. Uh, so before we get into that, my understanding, Nick, uh, you, know, you came into Red Hat through an acquisition, so give us a little bit about your background and what you work on uh, for Red Hat. Yeah, uh, about five years ago, uh, a company I was working for, Innovance, got acquired by Red Hat. And uh, I've been very uh, lucky uh, in that acquisition where I found a, a perfect home to express my talent. Um, I've been a free software advocate for the past 20 some years, uh, always been working uh, in free software for the past 20 years. Uh, and Red Hat is really wonderful for that. Yeah, it, it's interesting, Nick. Okay, yeah, I remember back in the early days, we used to talk about free software. Now we don't talk free, it's open source is what we talk about, you know, free is, is a piece of what we're doing, but it, you know, let's talk about, uh, you know, Innovance, I uh, absolutely remember, uh, they, they were a partner of Red Hat, uh, talked to them a lot at some of the open stack shows. Uh, so I, I, I'm guessing when we're talking about Edge, these are kind of the pieces coming together of what Red Hat had done for years with OpenStack and with uh, NFB. Uh, so what, what, what's the solution set you're talking about? Bring us inside. Uh, how you're helping your customers uh, with, with these types of solutions? Well, clearly uh, the solution we are trying to put together uh, has to combine what people already have with where they want to go. Uh, our vision uh, for the future is a vision where OpenShift is delivering a common service on any platform, including hardware at the far edge, on uh, a model where both VMs and containers can be hosted on the same machine. However, um, there is a, a long road to get there. And until we can fulfill all the needs, we are going to be using combination of OpenShift, OpenStack, and many other uh, products that we have in our portfolio to fulfill uh, the needs of our customer. We've uh, seen, for example, uh, Verizon, starting with OpenStack uh, quite a few years ago, now going with us with OpenShift that they're going to place on top of OpenStack or directly on bare metal. We've seen uh, other uh, big telcos use that again, very successful to deploy their 5G networks. Um, there is great uh, capabilities in the existing portfolio. We are just expanding that, simplifying it, because when we are talking about the edge, we are talking about managing um, thousands, if not millions of devices, and simplicity is key if you do not want to have your management costs increase. Excellent, so uh, you talked a lot about the service providers. Uh, obviously 5G is a big wave coming, a lot of promise to, as to uh, what it will enable, uh, both for the service providers as well as the end users. Help us understand where that is today and uh, what, what we should expect to see uh, in, in the coming year or so. So, in respect of 5G, um, there is two reasons why 5G is important. One, it is, be, it is important in terms of edge strategy because any person deploying 5G will need to deploy compute uh, resources much closer to the antenna if they want to be able to deliver the promise of 5G and uh, the, the promise of very low latency. The second reason it is important, it's because it allows to build a network of things 
which do not need to be interconnected other than through a 5G connection. And this simplifies a lot some of the edge application that we are going to see where sensors need to uh, provide data in um, a, 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 a way where you're not necessarily always connected to a physical network and maintaining a Wi-Fi connection is really complex and costly. Yeah, Nick, a, a lot of pieces uh, that, that sometimes get uh, confused or conflated. Um, want you to help us uh, connect the dots between what you're talking about for edge and what's happening in the telcos and the, the broader conversation about uh, hybrid cloud or Red Hat calls it the, the open hybrid cloud because you know the, the, there were some articles that were like, you know, edge is going to kill the cloud. Uh, I think we all know in IT, uh, nothing ever dies, everything is all additive. So how do these pieces all uh, go together? So for us at Red Hat, it's very important to build uh, the edge as an extension of our open uh, hybrid cloud strategy. Clearly, what we are trying to build is an environment where developers can develop workloads once and then can uh, the administrator that needs to deploy a workload uh, or the business line that needs to deploy a workload can do it on any footprint. And the edge is just one of these footprints as is the cloud, as is a, a private environment. So really having a, a single way to administer all these footprints, having a single way to define the workloads running on it is really what we are uh, achieving uh, today and making better and better uh, in the years to come. Um, the, the reality of to process the data as close as possible to where the data is being consumed or generated, so you have new footprints to, let's say, summarize or simplify or analyze the data where it is uh, being used. And then you can limit the traffic to a, a more central site to only the essential of it. Um, it is clear that with the current uh, growth of data, there won't be enough capacity to have all the data going directly to the central cloud. And this is what the edge is about, making sure we have intermediary uh, points of processing. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Nick, you talked about uh, OpenStack and OpenShift. Of course, uh, there, there's open source project with, with OpenStack. Uh, OpenShift, the big piece of that is, is Kubernetes. Uh, when it comes to edge, are there other open source projects, uh, parts of the foundations uh, out there uh, that, that we should highlight when looking at these edge solutions? Oh, uh, there is a tremendous amount of projects uh, that are pertaining uh, to the edge. Red Hat carries many of these projects in its portfolio. Um, the middleware uh, components, uh, for example, Quarkus or uh, our AMQ uh, uh, mechanism, uh, Kaka uh, are very important components. We've got storage solutions that are super important also uh, when you're talking about storing or handling data. You've got um, uh, in uh, our um, uh, management portfolio, two very key tool, one called Ansible that allows to configure remotely uh, components that, that, that is super handy when you need to reconfigure firewall in mass. Um, you've got another tool that is uh, a central piece of our strategy, which is called uh, ACM, Red Hat, uh, um, uh, I forgot the name of the product now. Uh, we are using the acronym all the time, which is our central uh, management mechanism uh, just uh, delivered to us through uh, IBM. So this um, uh, is a portfolio-wide uh, we are making, and I forgot the more important one, which is uh, RAIL, uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, which is delivering uh, very soon a new version that is going to enable easier management at the edge. Yeah, well, well, of course, we 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 know that uh, RHEL is uh, you know the core foundational piece fits with most of the uh, solutions uh, in their portfolio. That's really interesting how you laid that out, though. Uh, as you know, so, some people on the outside look and say, okay, Red Hat's got a really big portfolio. How does it all fit together? Uh, you just discussed uh, that all of these pieces uh, become uh, really important when when they come together to the edge. So maybe uh, you, you know. If, one of the things when we get together at Summit, of course, we get to hear a lot from your your, your customers. So 
uh, any customers you can talk about uh, that might be a good proof point for uh, these solutions that you're talking about today? So right now, most of the proof points uh, are in the telco industry because these are the, the first ones that have made the investment uh, in the edge. And when we are talking about Verizon, we are talking about a very large investment that is reinforced uh, in their edge strategy. We've got uh, customers uh, in telco all over the world that are starting to use our products to deploy their 5G networks. And we've got uh, lots of customer starting to work with us on uh, creating their edge strategy for in other vertical, particularly in the industrial and manufacturing sector, which is our uh, next endeavor after telco yet. Yeah, well, well, absolutely. Verizon, a customer I'm well familiar with when it comes to uh, what they've been using with Red Hat. I'd interviewed them at OpenStack a few years back uh, when they talked about that, those NFV type solutions. Uh, you brought up manufacturing. So that brings up one of the, uh, the concerns when you talk about edge or specifically about IoT environment. Uh, when we did some original research looking at the industrial internet, uh, the boundaries between the IT group and the OT, which uh, heavily lives, lives in manufacturing, uh, wouldn't they don't they, they don't necessarily talk or work together? So uh, how's Red Hat helping to make sure that customers you know go through these transitions, bust through those silos, and can take advantage of uh, these sorts of new technologies? Well, obviously, you you have to look at a problem in its entirety. Uh, you've got to look at the change management aspect, and for this, you need to understand how people interact together if you intend on modifying the way they work together. Um, you also need to ensure that the requirements of one are not impeding the other. Um, an environment of a manufacturer is really important, especially when we are talking about uh, dealing with IoT sensors, which have very limited security uh, capabilities. So you need to add in the appropriate security uh, layers to make what is not secure, secure. Uh, and if you don't do that, you're going to introduce uh, friction. And you also need to ensure that you can delegate um, administration of the component to the right people. You cannot say, oh, from now on, all of what you used to be controlling on uh, a manufacturer floor is now controlled centrally, and you have to go through this form in order to have anything modified. So having the flexibility in our tooling to enable respect of the existing organization and handle a change management the appropriate way is our way to answer this problem. Great. Uh, Nick, last thing for you. Obviously, this is a maturing space, uh, lots of change happening. So give us a little bit of a look forward as to uh, what users should be expecting. And uh, you know what? What what pieces will the uh, industry and Red Hat be working on uh, to, to bring full value out of the edge and five G solution? So, as always, uh, any such uh, changes are driven by the applications. And what we are seeing is, in terms of application, a very large predominance of um, requirements for AI, ML, and data processing uh, capability. So reinforcing all the components around this environment is one of our uh, key uh, addition that we are making as we speak. You uh, can see uh, Chris' uh, keynote, uh, which is going to demonstrate how we are enabling a manufacturer uh, to process the signal sent from multiple sensors through an AI and doing uh, early failure detection. Um, you can uh, also expect us to enable more and more complex use case in terms of footprint. Right now, we can do very small data center uh, that are uh, residing on three machine. Tomorrow, we'll be able to handle remote worker nodes that are on a single machine. Further along, we'll be able to deal with disconnected node, a, a single machine acting as a cluster. Um, all these are um, elements that are going to allow us to go further and further in the complication of the use cases. Uh, it's not the same thing when you have to connect a manufacturer that is on solid grounds with fiber uh, access, or when you have to connect an oil rig, for example, or a boat. 
talk about that too. Well, uh, Nick, uh, thank you so much for all of the updates. Uh, I know there's some uh, really good breakouts. Uh, I'm sure there's lots on the Red Hat website to find out more about Edge and 5G. So Nick Barsett, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. All right, back with lots more covered from Red Hat Summit 2020. I'm Stu Miniman, and thanks as always for watching theCUBE. Thank you.